Hello everyone, welcome to the web webinar for our paper presentation uh, for our work uh, regarding the um, backscatter communications, especially wirelessly powered, and some new uh, manufacturing technology for the additive manufacture flexible uh, devices and packaging. So we have five panelists in this uh, webinar, uh, which is myself and the Dr. Yuan Ding from Harvard University, uh, Dr. Alan Addy from the University of Michigan, and Dr. Jimmy Hester from the Arsene and also the Professor Manos uh, Tantares from the Georgia Institute of Technology. And the uh, next slides, we will um, uh, go through the contents of the webinar. We have selectively summarized the four topics from our paper, uh, including the backscattered communications will be presented by Dr. Dean, and then the uh, uh, RF wireless power transfer and harvesting will be presented by myself, and then additively manufactured millimeter wave IDs and WBT will be presented by Dr. Aid and also uh, Jimmy, and then we will all together discuss some future directions of research and some emerging applications, and then the last part will be the question and answers. Okay, so next uh, next part we will hand over to Dr. Dean for the backscatter communications. Thank you, thank you for thank you, Chow Yun, for the introductions. And uh, for myself, I'm uh, I'm Dr. Yuan Ding in Harvard University in Edinburgh in the United Kingdom. And uh, for our paper, it's about the wireless powered backscatter communications, and uh, it from the hardware point of view, from the manufacturing point of view, and also the subsystem and systems, and. Uh, Right. Uh, broadly speaking, our uh, technology the, that presented in this HB uh, preceding papers is around in the IoT background. So, uh, because I believe a lot of audience are not actively uh, doing the research in the backscatter communications in this domain, so I will uh, briefly introduce the background of it. So, for the IoT background, let's see. Uh, we need. Uh, we know there's a lot of uh, IoT devices out there, and which we need to uh, uh, pervasive connectivity of the low power sensors, actuators to do all type of smart things. And uh, for example, and uh, then we need kind of a connectivity between them. There are some of the, of course, available systems. Let's say for the outdoor long range type of the communication system like LoRa. And the IoT stick folks, they are talking about the kilometers kind of a range communication outdoor. And we also have a kind of an indoor uh, communication system, for example, widely used the Bluetooth ZigBee. And all these type of the IoT wireless connectivities, they, uh, we, we call these uh, uh, active devices. And the all, even though they are claimed to be low power, they're still in the range of the milliwatts on tens of milliwatts. So if we want to do to to power the system, normally we do with uh, either the external power source or the batteries. And with these batteries, there's a lot of the issues, challenges associated with this. So that, for example, how you do the charging, how you need to replace them, especially in some of the applications, which is uh, really challenging to get access to the systems. So in this aspect, we would like to see if we somehow can develop a wireless uh, IoT system without the battery so that it can be powered with some other uh, ha energy harvested, which is uh, uh, mostly will covered later by the by Chao Yun. Uh, let's see what we do if we want to further lower the power that consumed by the wireless links. One of the definitely things is uh, if we can put this active system to the passive system. Let's do some analogy. For example, uh, we do this analogy in the in the form of this uh, optical wireless communications. Uh, the very simple example is if we want to communicate using this optical wireless, if we have a power source locally, we can on and off basically to cover uh, to block the light source or kind of uh, unblock it so that we can have this pattern. In this way, we can do the line of sight uh, type of the optical transmissions. Uh, we call it active because locally we need to generate this light source. Okay, if we somehow we are using the available light source somewhere, for example, the sun, so that we uh, develop another system which is a reflect or on or reflect or not the sunlight to the receiver so that we can convey this pattern to the receiver end. This is what we call a kind of a passive. Uh, communication systems because locally we do not generate we do not need to generate this power hungry source which is a uh, the, the light source in this example but when we tra um, translate this to the electromagnetic wave transmissions 
it's more like the active system becomes we need to generate the RF carrier locally. And if we for the passive system, we try to utilize the available uh, electromagnetic waves around us, it can be de uh, dedicatedly generated or some other A band source, A band uh, electromagnetic waves. In the, this sense, let's present the what the backscatter communication system is. Generally, it includes three nodes, which is a carrier source, the receiver, and also the nodes which we want to convey some of the sensing information to the receiver end. And uh, how we categorize these things is uh, there are different ways to uh, to categorize the backscatter system. From the if we uh, similar to the radar system, we can see if the carrier source and the receiver, if they are co-located, we call that will be the monostatic systems. And if it's not correlated, of course, we call that biostatic system. And also for the, for example, the carrier source, where the, this carrier source is, uh, if we dedicate uh, to dedicate generate a kind of a source, no, normally it's a sine wave, the continuous wave, we call it dedicated backscatter system, or we use some opportunistic signals around us in that ambient uh, uh, wireless systems, for example, the Wi-Fi, FM, whatever. We call it a band backscatter system. And the general case, the a band backscatter system, because we use the, some other sources, it's a biostatic system. And we can also categorize it through the tags. For example, the mechanic, uh, the strategy to power in tags, some of the, the semi passive, some are passive, and also the different modulation types, depending on what modulation we would like to apply it to apply these backscatter modulations. And primarily in this paper, we probably focus more on the ABN backscatter and the different types of mo modulation, how we apply these uh, backscatter modulations. And um, how we do, especially how we do these modulations is uh, similar to the active type of the transmission, wireless transmission. So we can apply it to the different property of that uh, carrier waves, the magnitude, the phase, the frequency. And uh, we, there are different architectures. I just presented a very standard, very traditional way. We select the, the this is a tag antenna. We connect, we, we toggle this, uh, uh, we connect this tag antenna to different loads so that we can control the reflection coefficient at this uh, interface so that we control, we can control the magnitude, the phase and the frequency of the backscatter signals. For example, in the magnitude domain, we, uh, if we get a conjugate of the antenna, so in the zero bit we want to transmit, we basically to reflect a scatter nothing, scatter very low energy of it. Otherwise, we try to maximize this uh, uh, reflection coefficient so that we get a zero one pattern that can be recovered at the receiver end. This is kind of amplitude. And similar to the phase, we control the phase of the reflection coefficient, which what we designed is a load of this uh, that connected to the antenna. And for the frequency, it's slightly different. We basically to control the frequency, the, the the frequency that we toggle this switch between the different loads. Of course, there are some other extension of the how we do this system. For example, uh, if we want to remove the harmonics, we we have a different uh, hardware and the uh, and the software type of the uh, and the baseband type of the technology to to do all of these things. And uh, I just give uh, give you uh, a few examples that uh, in this uh, backscatter domain, what we uh, what the community did. For example, the empty domain, uh, because we focus on the ABN backscatter, which is uh, uh, from the complexity point of view, from the system cost point of view, ha has some beneficial. And uh, this example is ABN uh, FM backscatter mo uh, backscatter modulation backscatter communications, which is a uh, in this case, we use the magnitude domain, which is the full PAM type of the modulations. What we do is uh, we did that experiment um, by some other colleagues in the in, in the group in our uh, own campus, and then we use a kind of a FM uh, signal outdoor FM signals, which is uh, more than 30, around 35 kilometers around our campus, and uh, the the magnitude is around minus 60 dBm. And uh, to do these things, this is a uh, uh, we have the tag, we have the receiver in, in our lab. And uh, what we did is uh, actually we first we need to have a preamble so that we can do the synchronization to have a kind of a magnitude reference. And then we apply the data onto it. This is kind of a control signal. And then at the receiver end, we do some of the averaging and uh, so that we can recover the data. Uh, of course, the issue would be for the magnitude domain, it's a really susceptible to the noise. So that's why people, later uh, also to do the 
and also the data rate is quite low. So uh, because in the early slides, you can see we can only cover a few meters in terms of the communication distance. And uh, after that, we can also do the COM type of the IQ digital modulations. This is one of the structures that uh, researchers developed, which is uh, you use a power divider so that you divide it to the two branch with the 45 degrees. So you kind of uh, um, separated it to the IQ plane, IQ, IQ axis. With that axis, this is hardware implementations. And so that we can uh, have the kind of a reflection, the backscatter signals cover a range within this Smith chart. Because it's a shrinked, uh, it is a shrinked, we cannot cover the whole Smith chart because of the loss involved in this uh, hardware. Once we have the uh, this uh, range which can be covered by this uh, system, we can develop the kind of a calm type of modulation and using the other phenomenon which is uh, the, the fact uh, the fact which is uh, the frequency is a derivative of the phase with respect to time. So we can do some of the frequency domain, especially for chirp type of the modulations, which we developed for the LoRa communications. And finally, it's about the frequency domain, which, which we believe is more resilient to the noise and the interference. Uh, in this way, we develop the uh, uh, building upon our early experiment on the FM ABN backscatter. We developed two FSK type of the modulations. First, this is the received signal you can see. This is the, our backscatter with the frequency applied onto it, frequency shift applied onto it because of the toggle of this uh, switch. And then this is the ABN signals that count as the uh, interference. If we directly to use this as a spectrum, we can see we cannot recover this FB, which is our backscatter frequencies. And uh, in our group, we designed so that we develop a kind of a receiver algorithm, which is first to do the directive of this uh, baseband signals and divide, divide it by the orange signals. So that we can see for this third term, we will have uh, directly, we will have a tone, the single tone. Uh, extracted from the ABNT signals. This would be the, our signals, so the measure signals. We can see if our toggling frequency is around 70 kilohertz, we can recover those things so that we can develop that uh, frequency domain modulations. That's a kind of an experiment we did. And then in the, on the campus, we can extend the range from a few meters to the 100 meters, with, uh, even though the, the bit rate is a bit below. That uh, needs to be optimized later on. So hopefully I cover some of the uh, underlying principle for the backscatter communication as different types of modulation examples. I will hand it over to Chao Yun. Okay. Uh, 